Welcome to Grit and Gravitas with Anne and Annie, bringing you savvy, spirited stories of success. We're excited to deliver 30 minutes of inspiration, impact, and goodness. We'll be bringing you guests and friends from around the country who have very special work and personal journeys. I'm Anne Dieter Gallagher, your co-host with Annie Carnathan, and this is Grit and Gravitas. Let's go. All right, Annie Carnathan, here we are back in the uh, Grit and Gravitas recording studio at the world headquarters of Dieter Gallagher Group. <laughs> in Camp Hill, Pennsylvania. Yes, yes. With pride. And with listeners from around the world. Around the world. Uh, International Women's Day every day. Yep. At Grit and Gravitas. Never short on hot topics, hot takes. <laughs> <laughs> that are not planned, okay, uh, listening audience. These are not pre-planned. So uh, Annie Carnathan loves taking us uh, in circuitous routes. So I'm excited to hear the depth of what we're going to talk about. I re-listen to our podcast as much as I don't <laughs> necessarily. Uh, what, what, we're our yes. toughest judges. Yeah. And what I've done now as I go through them again is sort of say, this isn't really about you. It's what these women are saying. And of course we take this personally. We wish we didn't (laughs) in terms of (laughs) how we judge and rate rate ourselves. We're very difficult on ourselves. No one's more difficult on me than me. And Crystal Turner Childs. I was said to her at one point, so oh, high gear. Oh, 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 say she was oh, a bad. I told you I had like you know, a blank, blank, blank. I had a crush on her by the end of the show, <laughs> and I was staring at her. And but to to take that in as a sponge, and what you and I have to do is say, if we were listeners, why do people care? Why are they giving us their time, non renewable, and what are we offering to them? And when you look at the stature of her wow. professionally staggering you could say oh it's a men's business this is what what isn't basically you know in in huge context yes and woof but the fitness part her journey and now solely sort of like you and i just to help other women and when i say to her crystal is this your side hustle doesn't skip a beat says it's our side pa- it's my side passion that will yeah. forever alter me yeah. the way i look at this this isn't your and i right. side hustle right. it's our passion and we share it it burns brightly and if anything these women have energized me mm-hmm. you've energized me and literally i'll never forget looking at her i'll never forget saying what i said here and, and i was like whoo what is your passion mm-hmm. and you know, work is a is a third of your life, but it's half of your waking wow. hours. I know. I've seen those uh, statistics. You know, if we add up how much time we spend in the office versus at home, uh, oi, yeah. You know. Well, until now, at <laughs> least for, for <laughs> right I mean, for us, in not, the last year, yes. we're not back yet. Yes, yes. it's just, it's going to be your next week, and it it brought me to. You know, the last show we had a a a, a huge sort of. Uh, issue with priorities Mm -hmm. and guilt and stay at home or or go to work after children big big life decisions and uh we encouraged women to be more graceful with ourselves and with other women in the priority Mm -hmm. has stuck with me for my entire career and when i look out if there's a commonality for what women say to me is, how do you do that? What I do really well is say no. <laughs> I need to spend more time with you clearly because I, I'm i here. So this, is a, this will be a good conversation on learning to say no or how to say no because um, I don't do that very well. Say no <laughs> or say no well? <laughs> say no. I don't do that well. I need to say no more often. 
that would be in the workplace and um, in my choices outside of work where I spend my time. And I think it's, it's out of a desire to be helpful and thinking that I can add value, but we clearly can't add value 24 hours a day. There's not enough time. Back to priorities. Mm -hmm. To me, foundationally, there are going to be tenants that are in my bones that I wouldn't have a work day without them. Right. And when I, and, and look, it's, it's a lot of women's struggles about, let's just say the, the boss is out of bounds in terms of what they're requiring mm. for the job. Mm. It could be a board seat. Mm -hmm. It could be a project you want me to do that after this, I'm going to say, and here's all the reasons I'm, I'm not going to do this. <laughs> But the bottom line is women, and we get to generalize because we are women, have just such a higher threshold to me of saying no than men. Mm -hmm. And again, I, I don't want you know it to be an us versus them, but I've had women tell me, you say no like a man and don't you feel badly? Don't you feel this? Don't you feel that? No, because I have priorities right. and I'm not willing to come off that to please someone else. Well, that's, that's key. And saying no means you're saying yes to something else. That means there's more time in your day for client A or more time in your day to work with your team and prepare them, you know, for, for a big pitch or a big meeting or more time in your day for Robin Walker. And it's interesting you say that because... As a leader, there are a lot of micromanagers. I never wanted to be micromanaged, as for obvious reasons. You know, I'm Taz <laughs> running around. And it's interesting to me how that's born out of saying to your team, hey, guess what? You have to figure that out. You have to do that. But what a great learning um, experience for them. What a great leader. What a great CEO you are that you're able to do that. Again, go back to the micromanagement. I think the super successful CEOs are not micromanagers. That's what they hired this extremely talented team to do and to figure it out. To keep pulling that string. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the leaders running the departments, you know, the, the MBUs, the managed business units will say, well, I, I can do that better. Well, yeah, that's why you're where you are. Right. And that's why you're a coach and mentor for when they're, oh, by the way, you're not going to get to move up until they're ready to replace you. Yeah. So there's this symbiotic relationship. I, I, I don't marvel. I understand it now. Why there's this intense struggle with women and no. And you look at being a nurturer. Mm -hmm. You look at wanting to please people, which is the whole social media genre, uh, uh, which is your business. Mm -hmm. And I never saw the relationship be cruel. Did I say no in a cruel way? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So what is the cadence of that ability to say, it's no, and here's why. But you know what your priorities are, back to our prior episode. You already have a mental list of what really matters to you. So it's easier when we come or when we wake up with everything's a priority or I, or I want to excel at A to Z, it's impossible. You have a very clear vision of, you know, family, universal, faith, not in that particular order, but you know what the top three things are to you. And you're, uh, I'm going to take lessons from you, able to say no to things. So I've reached a point, especially with my um, service work, nonprofit work, that I will invest my time and my uh, influence, if you would, you know, bring along uh, the people that are in my orbit for specific organizations that meet my priorities. So food insecurity and children are the, are the top two. Does it have to do with children? Now, there are a host of fabulous charities out there. Um, and some of them, I, I leave a spot for others who would be better to serve in those seats. 
I can't serve in every seat. And I've been, you know, asked on several different boards, but you have to, back to the passion project, you have to serve and invest where you feel deeply about it. And that's mm-hmm. not every position. And it may not be a position now, like in your case, you're going to have time for a, for a charity passion project after Walker goes to school. And if you choose to invest your time in those areas. 100%. And with peace and love. Yeah. So, you know, here's, here's sort of the end of that when he isn't, you know, when he's at college right. and he's not home anymore. Well, that's a distinctly different um, priority right. then. And what I've found, who's talk about a lot about COVID and the pandemic and um, I moved me up. Someone what will a great say line. To me, okay, so, there. Okay, okay. So <laughs> that's the business vitamin, uh, especially now. Move yourself up. We can't be number ten on that list because there's no you. You have to be healthy. You have to be mentally sound. You have to um, set your priorities. You can't have yourself as number ten. Someone said to me the other week, "Well, I see what you're doing for everybody else, but what are you doing for you?" And something that simple. Because he, I'm someone that has never had a problem saying no. Think about the women, the untold amount of women who absolutely do. And it was one of the most difficult things about the pandemic. And I think it accelerated me saying to my leaders, you have to figure this out. First of all, you have to figure out what happens if it's if it's not me and who knows yeah. when that would right. be i mean you have to have a backup no one can see you out on vacation you need to take the vacation get out of here stop it you know that that we're not what sort of going from a to b to to the capacity what i like about that is we have tended in the last 50 years or maybe longer glorified this overworking mentality. Yes. 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 I think, uh, here we go again with COVID or or just a change in mindset that that's not really, you can't give 100% and sustain that. It's like overworking means you're detracting time, either, you know, just downtime to be creative and to, to have your mind relax and think of other things. Plan a vacation, spend time with your family and children. So I don't think, um, I think there is less glorification of that kind of tireless work ethic for who, for what. And if you look at the intentional part of no, to me, it's not entirely clinical, but it's like, I I can't adhere to these priorities. Right. right. If I'm just sort of, and then I don't feel good to, to your point in the other show about anything. Cause I'm just, I'm sort of whiplashed and I can't, really figure out what that note looks like. And my point now, and we, we talk about when I see two people at a meal out or, or, and they're both on their phones, I'm like, Oh, and I think that's a whole other topic, (laughs) but (laughs) that's about five episodes that we can talk about that. And when I'm with you, I'm with you. And when I'm with Colin or Mark or, you know, or Sean or I mean, I'm with them. And I think what Zoom has enabled us to do is, is multitask. Mm-hmm. Well, if I was in a meeting with you physically, would you be doing the same things? So I'm all about quality over quantity. And there are people that when we pick up the phone and we haven't talked for six weeks, it's like we're just continuing yes. Yes. the last sentence. So for me, not high maintenance. You know, I feel the way I feel and I don't have any issue saying no. I've learned a lot about how to say that. And if I can't be on a board or I can't contribute that non-renewable time in a meaningful way, I'm not there to be a hood ornament. I'm not there as a car drives down a road and I'm part of what you know, the make and model is I to have fill to... a LinkedIn list of um, I serve here, here, here and here. Right. People did tell me the other day there are things called I mean, I, I do know this, right? It's our business or whatever, <laughs> but um, they buy bots all the time. Oh. And, right. And I thinking, OK, that's like a huh, great. You know, but 
so 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 that's their decision and i stay in my lane i i try really hard not to 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 judge anything i try to stay in my lane if they ask i have a contribution but i've just learned that everyone is operating you know from their own position when it comes to no i just know fully it's a very very difficult word for women Yes, I think as women ascend, if you aspire to any kind of leadership position, I think a large uh, majority of us feel compelled that we have to say yes to everything, um, put ourselves way down on the list, put our families way down on the list, because we have to run faster, jump higher uh, to make it there. And I don't think, uh, in retrospect, I've seen that that's not true. Uh, in my own career, I've seen that's not true. Um, but I'd like to revisit your point on uh, moving yourself up and, and being present. One of my older brothers said, Anne, be where your feet are. Be what you're about. That's sensational. So wherever you are, if you're on the golf course, stop checking your phone. If you are uh, even at home at dinner, make sure the phone is somewhere else. It is. It robs us. It robs us of conversation. It robs us of insights from our family. And I've seen it a million times at dinner, as you just mentioned, of where all the children will have maybe headphones on and, and on, on their device uh, while the parents are on their device at a dinner table. My men, no, I'm not making dinner to sit here as an afterthought. <laughs> you know devices, know anything. And if you want to do that, you don't need me to eat dinner. I mean, it's a, it's a huge effort to make dinner. You know, and a sneaky thing happened during COVID. Yes, yes, yes. I was scared. What was the future of the company? Right. Right. How do we stabilize the employees? How do they juggle all the things now that home is? Mm -hmm. You know, a teacher said, I, and what happened? By all those yeses, what happened? All the no's started to push me down further and further because I wasn't saying them. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I looked up and wait a minute, wait a minute. A, I can't sustain this. B, I don't want to. Right. And how do I now that I've said you have to figure this out as necessity, holy cow, you look up, company's fine. And look what they've learned. Yeah. And so I'm fascinated by that. It's, it's what happened while I was making other plans and had spent really a lot of time saying, no, here are my priorities. That doesn't fit with the priority, but only in retrospect am I able to see that. And probably this show, am I really able yeah. to see that? And I think that's a huge part of taking time for me. Yeah. I didn't feel well mentally. I didn't feel well physically. I just wasn't who I had always been, and what were the factors in that, but most importantly, how do I fix that? You touched a little bit on uh, when you're in Zoom meetings, and I've done a presentation on your best virtual self, and I actually just uh, was reached out by a major uh, company to do another presentation to a group of scientists on, they're in R&D, on your best virtual self because they're not returning to the many at most of them are not returning to Look the at office. You ADG. That's spectacular. <laughs> well, since I'm married to a chemist, so I, I kind of feel the last uh, <laughs> 40 years here, I've, I know how they think. But uh, in my original presentation, I said, always have the video cam on. To your point about multitasking, when we go dark like that, oh. you know, we can check the email, you know, we it's can- It's all for one, one for all to me. If we're all going to be on, we're yes. all on. If we're not on, then it's a phone call. That's a whole other thing. But the Zoom world has caused many of us to relax our standards where you're on a meeting. I know this has happened to you. It's happened to me many times where the person will say, you know, sorry, I forgot. I didn't get to take a shower yet. Well, seriously, would you say that if you just walked in the office? Would you say uh, anything? And I said, remember, some of your leadership is on the Zoom call and promotions will be coming. And who, even on Zoom uh, or Microsoft Teams, you want to present your best virtual self. So you are first in line when they're thinking who, you know, uh, we have this position. Who would you like to recommend? Who really in your mind has just... Uh, 
really presented their best self. And I feel it, Zoom is not an excuse for us to bring less than our best self to the workplace. And that brings up a, a fail. And it just happened Monday. When you say, hey, huge opportunity. Talk about Women's you know, International Day. And I'm prepared, but I'm not this. Going in because media interviews now are many times by Zoom, and that's and a different it, world. It and 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 here's where I'm such a realist. Zero excuses. It came up and down. That's a big meeting for us that day to get off the ground. Yeah. I want to say yes. I'm going to make this work. And the next thing I know, I'm watching it. I'm like, oh my god. So <laughs> Rob's like, Rob's like. <laughs> you know, you're not lit from behind. There's so much I'm like, no, no, I just look poorly. I Well, that, uh, go back to your your own worst critic. You didn't look poorly. That, well, no, I didn't look like this though, and that's how I look on any given day. This is how I look. And it was a reminder to me I have to look that way. Because you don't know when you're gonna jump on a video call. Exactly. You don't know when that opportunity came up exactly. and I'm representing a company and I was really disappointed in me. And I have to tell you though, too, I never gave it a thought. So guess what? There can't be any thinking around that. You have to look this way every time. And thank God the professional picture was up, right? That's how I look, <laughs> but it just was, and it, it isn't, it isn't vanity. It yeah. isn't, it isn't, you know, women and, and the, the, perfect perfection but just I just didn't have that effort and well plus I it's a me. zoom and, and I think that me. was your yeah. first oh, zoom horrible. interview <clears throat> excuse me these are different times but but to your point I tell every single client I would love to give you a week runway and say this oh. is when the th this is when you're scheduled to be on the evening news this is when the spot's going to run and and we'll work for the whole week on your talking points, that does not happen. In this, in the last year for this environment, so many clients have such great stories of how they pivoted and Universal being one of them. How, how are you managing this 50 person workforce and still providing the clients with 110% of you and your, your strategies and your, your media insights? <clears throat> But I say, you have to come every, you have to wake up every day. I mean, it sounds cute when you say, oh, I'm in my yoga pants. Not so cute because I may need you. I may need to have you meet me at your office where the camera is going to show up. And then the iPhones are going and the, the news station is going. And I need you to look like the executive that you are. Yeah. And so I, I think it's important to say, okay, how do I deal with that? Because there's still, it fails to happen every week, right. every day right. if I, and I just look. I would do it differently. I've, I've learned now and I'm going to move on. There's nothing no, I can do to go back and say, but, but the other part is never gave it a single thought. I was doing everything I could do to say yes and make that happen. Yes. I, and I was, appreciate I, that. I never, ever, ever gave it a single thought until I saw it. I'm like, Oh, I didn't think of that. Well, I, I didn't think of it. And so next time I'm going to think of it. And I think that's a really great illustration that I know it, I acknowledge it, I own it. And, and this is, this is my, is such a really fun, important part of me, Yeah, you know, as it is to you. And wow, that's not, that's not what I projected. And I love this part of it. So it's, it's a mistake. It's a fail. I did it. Can't change it. Going to move on. I'll know much, much better the next time. And oof, man. I hope, well, hope, you're, oof. <laughs> again, as the professional working with you, you're way harder on yourself. And I, I am the same way. <clears throat> I, you know, revisit clips of myself or, or presentations or photos and say, oh, I should have uh, done this better, or done that better. But your master's at your content. So that was, that was number one. You looked fine, but it's a reminder for all of yes. us. Yes. The digital. Yes. And here's, a, this is what I do. Um, when I'm ready to go on somewhere, I, I pull up the iPhone and flip the camera and say, what's 
from this view, what's what, the, what does it look right. like? Yeah, does that's it, great. Does everything look? Is the lighting? Lighting is paramount in this world, and it's it's amazing. You know, I've got a ring light in the other in the other office for all those times. What's the background when you're ready to do a zoom? Because I'm telling you, there many people are on the zoom, especially if their camera's off, that you're just not thinking the caliber of people in this conversation. And the zoom could be recorded. And maybe the company is going to host it, you know, maybe it was a webinar and it's going to be public. Well, then you really want to put your best virtual self. Not to do with anything, but how, how funny is it that Zoom's become Kleenex? I know. <laughs> All right. I mean, because because we're Microsoft Teams yes. because we're Microsoft yes. everything. But I do, um, but, but it goes back to the root of what did I want to say? I wanted to right. say yes. No matter what the day had, which it, it blew up, right. but but I wanted to say yes, because saying no was not the right thing to say. And I believe that there are demonstrable differences between saying yes when you make it happen with a day of priorities right. and so that undulation between, ooh, I really should say no, but this is such a big opportunity, I have to say yes. And then just didn't prepare for it. Literally sat in that chair from almost 7 a.m. till 3 p.m. And that's not good either. Yeah. But I just, I think it's important to share those moments with our listeners because I still have them frequently. Well, and I've, I've said yes way too many times um, on uh, to commitments or committees or organizations where I'm taking someone's seat. Someone probably was better capable to serve there. So in my desire to, when I was asked to say yes and to be helpful and not ever to let anyone down or disappoint them, uh, in retrospect, I wasn't the best person. That's an incredible I was insight. taking someone's seat that was better wow. able to serve or maybe, maybe had a new opportunity to be uplifted and to serve in a first-time position. We can't take all the seats. And it's a good reminder, while we want to be helpful to everybody, again, remember what your passion is. Bring it back down to what do you care deeply about? You know, I care about a lot of things, but there's a lot of organizations that aren't my top three. And as you know, Salvation Army is top of the top. And I gladly serve there, but we can't serve on everything. So we need to, you know, saying no means someone else gets a chance to serve. And you have to delineate where your passion is going to be the biggest fit. There's no question in the world that Crystal's passion is fitness. And to the extent she has dedicated the time she has to it, unequivocally, that's I mean, that's where her heart sings. Yeah, totally. So uh, another compelling grit and gravitas. Uh, we're bumping up against the With time. With Annie Carnathan. <laughs> These 30 minutes go so fast. And again, uh, please subscribe, download, share. Review. Do, yes. Do whatever you can to help us help you. You know, whatever that looks like. Keep the comments coming. Ann and I are aligned in that every single comment we've gotten, we've answered. And I think that matters. We care. So until the next time, Ann Dieter Gallagher. Have a high gear day. Us. Thanks for listening. It's our desire that these stories will bring energy, ideas, and fresh thinking that you can use today. Subscribe to our podcast and follow us on Instagram and have a high gear day.